Time once again for the markets. Prices seem to be headed up. As always, Zach Ashmore here to lay it all out for you. Zach? Thanks, Mike. Once again, markets rising for row crops, especially corn, soybeans, and wheat. Much of that having to do with supply. Let's take a look. Last week's biggest gain, soybeans, bringing futures up $14 or over $14, followed by corn and wheat, both up over 30 cents. Last week's biggest loss, lumber again, but it's still higher than this time last year. Has a ways to go before reaching pre-COVID prices. Last week, we talked about this month's WASDE report, supply the big takeaway, and as you saw, markets up for those commodities. That wasn't the only report released that day. 11 others, mostly markets and trade data, both domestic and abroad. However, they all compounded to set a bullish tone, especially for row crops in coming months. Analysts Don Rose, Matt Bennett, Ted Seifred, and Naomi Bloom talk about what that means. On this final report, uh, this report, usually it's a little bit more measured. You know, you take the yield down to 3.8 bushels an acre on the corn. Um, really what it signals our demand is too strong for the uh, supplies that we have right now and that we have to ration. So um, it's, it's one that's work in progress, but what it really did is set the tone going into February now for the next month. We have a whole new set of supply demand factors that are bullish again. So the bull gets fed after this report and consequently you had a strong move up this last week. You dropped quarterly stocks, December 1st stock, 600 million bushels. Uh, we just dropped the crop 325 on 2020. So uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. I mean, obviously, uh, two quarterly stocks reports in a row, you lose 600 million bushels total, I guess, out of the 2019 crop. Very interesting. But regardless, what's going to drive it moving forward? I guess, from, in my opinion, you have to obviously keep an eye on South American weather. We know that. But we are going to be setting a crop insurance price here before too long. And I think there's going to be a battle for acreage. And, uh, you know, the battle for acreage the last few years has been a hot potato type game. But this year, I think we're actually vying for acres. And I, I do think that uh, at this stage of the game, it's pretty tough to get down on these markets, considering what we've got going on from a stocks to usage ratio, both for corn and beans. We have been trading a bullish scenario in the corn for some time, and that was really based on the supply side of things. We saw the USDA rip the Band-Aid off by lowering the yield as, as much as we've ever seen from a November to a January report. We saw, uh, to Matt's point, uh, 325 million bushels come off of last year's production, 76 million bushels of production come off from the year before. We saw a quarterly grain stocks number that was really very bullish. These are all numbers that are retrospective of where we've been coming from, and the corn market had been responding to that and telling us these things from a long time ago. But going forward, to your guys' point, we need to fill it, feed the bull. We are not in a situation where we have a price rationing scenario for corn. In fact, the USDA just said we lost 250 million bushels of demand because of the higher prices. Going forward, if corn prices continue to go higher, I worry very much about ethanol. I worry very much about uh, what's going to happen with our exports. While the export sales are really very good, we're only 26% shipment-wise of the USDA target. Can we logistically hit the USDA's target, even if we have the sales? We'd have to set pretty close to near record weekly sales averages to hit the USDA's target. Will we logistically be able to do that or not? I don't know. I think we just saw the most bullish USDA report for corn that we're going to see. Uh, I think the speculators are taking hold of this market, and, and we've seen things like this happen. We see it happen all the time. Look at Bitcoin, look at Tesla, look at the stock market as a whole for that matter. So let the speculators run. That's all well and good. But as actual market analysts that we, you know, we pay attention to balance sheets and things like that, we have to understand that we're maybe overrunning the mark here on corn. And as producers, we need to be looking at this as a great opportunity. I think the biggest thing producers need to just be monitoring right now is what they can be doing for additional starts for sales for old crop and for new crop. I mean, quite frankly, that's what people want to know. So here's the pricing ranges that you need to be watching for both corn and soybeans. For the March corn, your trading range right now, 520 is support and 550 is resistance. I could see us trading in a sideways pattern for the short term. On the new crop corn, your trading range that we're looking at 450 was a big number that the market was finally able to get through for December corn. We're above it right now. So the next upside target is closer to um, the 475 area and ultimately $5. So thinking about making those cash sales to the point of these guys, you know, we are supported going forward, but now are we at the point where we see a setback? And when you look at the soybean market, 
March soybean futures um, are well supported right now at the $14 range and below there at 1375 and above there at 1450 for new crop beans. $12 is a significant resistance point that you have to be watching. Thinking forward, if we grow an additional 6 million acres of soybeans this year, if we have trendline yields, you're still looking at ending stocks for the next year coming in somewhere between 150 and 300 million bushels. So that keeps the scenario tight going forward. There's opportunities there. Ted makes a great point about maybe this market has priced in all the bullish news it can for the short term. We have inauguration next week. There is a lot to watch. There's a lot to manage. And that's it for a deeper look into the markets. Supply may be the talk of the year. That depends on weather, acreage, and harvest, both here and abroad.